Thank you all very much. I'm very pleased to be here in California with you and very honored. My family and I are so appreciative that the University of Southern California continues to honor my grandmother so prominently and that you all continue to think so highly of her and keep her memory and her legacy alive. It's absolutely wonderful to be the granddaughter of Pat Nixon. What she accomplished in her 81 years is nothing short of extraordinary. And today it's very interesting to me, not being from California, to experience a little bit of the environment in which she spent her formative years. As the film a few minutes, minutes ago said, she really was a self-made person and I know how seriously she took her education. I remember my mother telling me that my grandmother's name was actually Thelma. Thelma was the name that her mother preferred and the name that she was given when she was born. But when she enrolled at junior college, she put the name Patricia on her application. <laughs> Later telling her daughters that um, Patricia was my father's favorite name because I was his St. Patrick's babe in the morning because she was born on March 16th, a few hours before St. Patrick's Day. Her new name was a symbol of her new life. I'm not sure if people realize how hard and how much she had to work to put not only herself through school, but also her older brothers as well. Her story is, I think, the ultimate example of triumph over extreme adversity. She lost both of her parents at a young age, and the Great Depression ravaged the Ryan family's small truck farm in Cerritos. So during her time at USC, she needed to work in order to support herself. For the most part, she worked during the days and took classes at night. She graded a psychology professor's student papers and helped him with research 20 hours a week. In exchange, her $270 tuition was paid. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, but she needed to work to supplement her income. There's a quote that I found from her English professor, and he said, if you went into the cafeteria, there was Pat Nixon at the serving counter. An hour later, if you went into the library, there was Pat Nixon checking out books. And if you came back to campus that evening, there was Pat Nixon working on some student research program. She was even an extra in a few Hollywood movies. She and her dear friend Virginia would most often appear in scenes at football games because their friends on the USC football team would let them know when the movies were putting out their casting calls. And throughout it all, she somehow maintained her grades to graduate cum laude in 1937. Her degree carried with it the equivalent of a master's, so she was actually the first first lady to earn her master's degree. The beautiful new exhibit right outside the foyer certainly shows how deep her ties are to the university. I don't want to take up too much time with you this afternoon, but I thought that I might share with you a few fun memories of my grandmother and what I think we might be able to learn from her today. Although my sister and brother and I didn't know our grandmother until well after her years in the White House, we knew how much people loved her. She only made four major public appearances in her 20 years of retirement, but she took us quite often uh, out on the town in New York City to fun places like Radio City Music Hall at Christmas time and the circus. We would play hours of imaginary games together. My favorite was playing shoe store in my grandmother's closet. <laughs> She listened to us and she loved us. She repeatedly told her friend Adele Rogers, this is what life is all about, children and grandchildren, isn't it? She also loved to garden. She certainly had quite a green thumb. She beautified the gardens, first of Casa Pacifica in San Clemente, and later of my grandparents' big cozy home in Saddle River, New Jersey. I think it's certainly appropriate that a beautiful red rose is named for her and replanted at the White House every spring. I think that today the world could use a little bit of Pat Nixon's love and a little bit of her example. I've carried her love and her warmth with me through the years. When I entered the medical field as a child life specialist caring for the emotional needs of hospitalized children, I remember the beautiful sentiment captured on her tombstone, which said, even if people can't speak your language, they know if you have love in your heart. My grandmother's ability to radiate love and kindness to all she knew made a very deep impact on me. I'd like to leave you with something I think you'll all appreciate. I was particularly struck when I read a letter that my grandmother wrote to her brother, Bill, in the early 1930s. At the time, she was living with a group of Catholic nuns in New York City, and she was an x-ray technician. She expressed in her letter her desire to join her brother in California and enroll at USC. The world is just what we make it, she wrote. 
so let's make ours a grand one. That was the Pat Nixon that USC knew and the Pat Nixon that our country knew, that millions around the world knew, and that my family certainly knew. And she did indeed make the world a grand one. Thank you. Thank you. At, th at this time, I'm happy to take questions if there are any. Melanie, what's it like being a member of two presidential families? Yes. It is a very unique experience, but I will say that I think one of the major goals of my parents growing up was to create the most normal environment for us. So um, grew up in a, in a town, um, a normal town, and went to public school and um, really did not have a lot of experience in public life. Um, we, we had a very, very private life, and, and it was very normal. And so um, some, a lot of times I would forget that I was really a part of um, two presidential families. And I think times when sometimes I would, it would strike me and I would remember is, you know, when I would be out with my grandparents, um, Ma and Ba, as we called them, um, the Nixons, and people would come and ask for their autograph, and you know, I thought it was very strange. But then, you know, over time, learned um, learned just what an incredible legacy um, they have, and so, yeah. And and now, as I'm as as I'm an adult, I'm learning more and more and more, and it's impacting me in great ways. Next question to your right. Thank you for being here today. My name's Ann Hill, I'm from San Diego, and we are proud to be continuing the Herb Klein Lecture Series. And Herb Klein was a trustee of USC and the director of communications for President Nixon. And perhaps you knew Herb along the trail. We are proud to uh, be continuing his legacy as well. Wonderful, thank you. I wonder if you have any suggestions that your mother would have made uh, on how the young Trump will get along living in the White House. Oh, I really do enjoy hearing stories from my mom because, um, like I was saying before, I, I, we never had any security or anything at, at my house, and so I was very much distant from that whole world. But my mom used to tell us stories. Um, she was in college at the time when her father was president, and um, she had a security guards following her 24-7. Um, her big rebellion is she would she would sneak out of, of her apartment and go to the movies with her girlfriend. Um, so that was that was very exciting. I don't think that anybody could get away with that at this point. I think I think security is a little tighter. Um, maybe some more security guards. But um, I think I think that I what I really appreciate is my mom always just supported her parents so much and and was just their biggest champion. She was always right by their side. She was always advocating for them. And, and my mother did years and years of um, ad advocacy for the, the library and for the foundation. And so um, I really admire that. And I also admire that my mom has um, really created for us um, this a beautiful childhood and, and some privacy, privacy and normalcy as well. To your right. Welcome to Town and Gown. Thank you. What are the special things that you remember that you did with your grandparents? Things that maybe you did uh, cooking, mm. Christmas, special events? I have to say, um, my grandmother did not cook very much, but, um, <laughs> but, uh, but we did so many things together. I mean, I think as, as a child, some of my coziest, happiest memories are just nestling up with Ma um, at reading bedtime stories. She was just the epitome of the most wonderful grandmother and my grandfather too. Um, they were so warm and, and kind and, and loving. Um, I have a lot of memories of, of swimming with them or, or, or going out um, on the town in New York City, but also just um, one of my favorite things was we used to play flashlight tag in the neighborhood. Um, so we would, we would walk around the neighborhood and the kids would all run and, and, and hide behind trees and then the adults would take flashlights and find us um, in the woods. and um, and that was, they loved taking their walks and it was really great fun for us. Um, my grandfather and my grandmother were so friendly in the neighborhood and so people would often come and ask for autographs or come and say hello. And um, any time we were um, out and about, um, they would always turn to people and, and welcome them and talk to them. Um, a, a special moment for me when I was a kid um, was I was a, a Philadelphia Phillies fan um, and so, the best mascot in the world is the Philly Fanatic. I don't know if you if you know, um, but when I was little, one time we went to a Phillies game with my grandparents, and um, 
all of a sudden, we were walking down a hallway and the Philly fanatic walked up to us and just fell on his knees and started going like this. So my grand and all three kids were like, oh! I mean, it was the best moment of our lives because that was, Philly fanatic was, the, so that, that was another moment where I realized, huh, oh, there's, something, there's something with this guy. Um, he's so special. Uh, so, but I, I have so many memories of just, we oftentimes we would just on the weekends go up to New Jersey um, to their home and just, it was a home away from home. I felt so comfortable there, so loved and um, grateful for the time that I had with them. Uh, hi, Melanie. My name is Paige McDaniel and I'm from San Clemente. Hi. And I love uh, running the beach trail and down by your grandparents' um, Western White House, is mm -hmm. what we call it. Um, what I'm wondering is how do you plan to pass your grandparents' legacy down to your children? I know that I um, have always been enamored with presidential families and especially first ladies. So even though your grandparents were before my time, I do know a lot about them mm -hmm. and so much respect them. And I hope that your children and their grandchildren will also come to realize how wonderful they were for our country. Absolutely. I think, thank you for the question. I think that um, it's very important to me to maintain their legacy. Um, for, for both sides of my family, the Eisenhowers and the Nixons, I, I never met um, Dwight Eisenhower or Mamie, his wife, but to me, they feel very alive because my father told so many stories. My father considered Mamie his best friend and, um, and was very, very close to, to Dwight. And so hearing the stories and, the, and the, the funny little stories that really gave them personality um, brought them to life for me. And it's very important to me to pass that down to just especially to show a personal side of, of who these people are. Um, such important historical figures, and, but they had families who loved them and, and lo great personalities and interesting stories. And so um, I think that that's very important to pass down and, and even share with, with the world too. Um, as I have becoming more and more involved in the Nixon Foundation and the Nixon Library, um, that is one of my goals. And to continue to learn too, to learn about my family, to, to um, be more of an expert and to be able to share with people the wonderful things that they did. But I think it's so important. Thank you.